idea that, that Dr. Chazen had um, to to have a piece in the, you know in front of the museum because there's essentially no artwork there. It was really at the suggestion of Joe Chazen and Jonathan to do this particular work, so it was sort of having an opportunity put in front of us, basically, which was very nice. I thought it would be uh, uh, a good idea to try to find different places in uh, Rhode Island where I could sort of memorialize my interest in, um, in art and the memory of my wife. And one of the places I thought about was uh, RISD. One of the sculptors who I think is uh, particularly gifted and pleasant and uh, clever and all the things that would be required to make a piece that would have uh, interest and meaning uh, is Jonathan Bonner. Basically, there are these granite ellipsoids. There's a column of several of them that, that are on top of each other that sort of looks like a plant stalk. And then there's the same number of them scattered on the ground in another section of the, of the area. The tall piece is 14 feet by uh, 18 inches in diameter. The units are also sitting stones, you can sit on them. They're like fragments, and uh, although they're very, they aren't broken, much the way a, a peach comes off the tree, you know, it doesn't break off the tree, it's got an intentional place where it lets go. The units in the tall piece are exactly the same as the horizontal units. Uh, it's like as if the tall piece fell over and, and separated into these units. You know, we are the arts city, and this is RISD and the RISD Museum, and there are kids here, and many of them stay. I think part of uh, the process ought to be how do, how do these artists in our community and their careers be embellished and uh, and grown as part of a mission of institutions that educate and show and whatever. And not everybody's going to go inside to a museum. And I think that to the extent that our um, environment is, um, is uh, more pleasant and filled with art forms, maybe we'll be better. Because God knows we can use help as human beings to be better. And I, I think it'll be a, a very pleasant uh, addition. Dr. Chazen's gift is a great sort of call to action for us and uh, it, it'll allow us uh, to refocus our energies out here. In anticipation of the arrival of the column, uh, this fence will actually go away. Repainted, restored, there are pieces you may be able to see that are they're almost missing. I mean, there's so much corrosion here that some of these pieces are actually going to have to be um, completely remade. So we're going to try to make this in a, a, a fitting location for Jonathan's sculpture. The, the material is um, a granite that's called Bethel White, and it's not actually white. It's, it's got a whitish background, and it's got a, a sort of blackish flecks in it. And uh, the overall effect is light gray. This plate is going to be bolted into the stone. Right. So when we get the column, we stand the column up, this plate is going to sit on these huge bolts that are going to be into the concrete. It went perfect. A lot of planning. The planning, you know, made it, made it work. It's the first piece, major piece of contemporary sculpture to land on Benefit Street um, in a public setting since um, Gil Franklin's two sculptures came, one on the RISD beach and one on Fraser Terrace, two large bronze sculptures. It's really a major moment in the history of contemporary art in the city. Well, I think to me what I saw so as interesting is, you know, there's a really famous piece by Brancusi, a modernist sculpture from the earlier 20th century. And, um, you know, it's a nice reference. Brancusi's piece is the endless column, and so in a way I see that, you know, Jonathan extending that tradition, but it very much looks like his own work. If you've seen any of the pieces before, you have a sense that it's definitely of Jonathan Bonner. But I think for an art school and a museum at an art school, it's a really nice addition. The installation was uh, as smooth as one would want it. Perfect weather, nary a hitch. None of them were dropped through the uh, roof of Car House as they were sailing through the air. So what does each section weigh? 600 pounds. Wow. Oh, it looks great.
You know, the whole, all the different yeah. things. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow, is this a great way to begin nice weather here at the museum? Yeah. A great piece of yeah. outdoor sculpture. I mean it, you know, it's like perfect. Yeah. You know, like, this is the first hot day and we've got like art. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things it takes to have good public sculpture is donors who care about uh, making that happen. The way my work goes, uh, I'm interested in not what it looks like, but what it is. And uh, if, for instance, you can have a sculpture that represents something, like a figurative sculpture, you know, so that it's, it's a picture of something. The extreme other end of it, you can have something like a hammer, which doesn't represent anything. It just is something, you know, it is a hammer. Because of that, it has a physicality that, that's uh, uh, measured and real and palpable. Uh, and that's what uh, you know. I'm after in general. You know, the primary concern is not what it looks like, but what it is. In this case, it's just five stones represented in two different ways. <laughs> 